I, I cannot believe that. That was played at like all of my school functions growing up. I'm gonna have to fact check you, Watch Mojo. Hey guys, it's Amanda. If you're new here, I'm an American living in the UK, so I post about my life and experiences living here, as well as these weekly reactions requested by all of you. Today, I'll be watching the top 10 things America stole from Britain. And to be honest, I'm really curious what's gonna be on this list. What do you think will be on it? What do you think America stole from Britain? Put it in the comments. Remember to leave your reaction video ideas in the comments or head over to my Instagram and leave it there. From pastries to patriotic sing-alongs. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 things America stole from Britain. He likes American stuff. Oh. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're counting down famous facets of American culture which actually originated in Britain. While standout British inventions are subject for another list, today's countdown tackles typically American things, which the US has the UK to thank for. Number 10, Apple Pie. As American as apple pie, right? Wrong. The sweet treat is a staple on US dining tables, but the British were the first to serve it way back in the 1300s. A popular dessert throughout European history, with Dutch and Swedish styles also inspiring menus worldwide, it was taken across the pond with the 17th century colonists. Since then, apple pie has become a standout symbol of US patriotism, as well as a central component to a teen comedy franchise. It's not what it looks like. Number 9, YMCA. <laughs> that did surprise me at first, but I am a serious Great British Bake Off fan, so I did actually know that apple pie originated here. But it's delicious, especially with a little bit of ice cream. Mm. YMCA. <laughs> Way before village people turned this institution into a cheesy disco anthem, and long before the YMCA swept across America, the Young Men's Christian Association was the brainchild of English philanthropist George Williams. Dismayed by working conditions in 18th century London, Williams conceived the now famous charity as a safe place for its patrons. While the movement's worldwide influence is something to be proud of, difficult to imagine Williams joining in with the dance moves. Number eight. Oh, I, I cannot believe that. That was played at like all of my school functions growing up. I'm gonna have to fact check you, Watch Mojo. Chocolate bars. I think I'll eat it now. <laughs> Candy bars are big business stateside, but before Mars, Hershey's, Milky Bar, or Baby Ruth, there was one bloke in Bristol making confectionery history. Joseph Fry finalised the first mass-produced chocolate bar in the mid-1800s, around the time that the Dutch developed a chocolate press. Fry's chocolate cream hit shelves in 1866 with a famed fondant filling, and the bar can still be bought today. John Cadbury quickly followed suit, while the likes of Hershey's didn't arrive until the late 1890s. Number 7. Sandwich It's a shame when we stole it, we didn't keep the same recipe. As much as I enjoy a Hershey's bar, yes, I said it, they are yummy. But there's just nothing like dairy milk, especially the fruit and nut bar. It is my favorite. Jizz. Could I have a glass of wine? Okay. And a, and a ham sandwich? <laughs> if you like. With a pickle? <laughs> All right. Thanks to world conquering fast food outlets, Homer Simpson and Joey Tribbiani, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this food stuff was a US creation. However, the history of the sandwich is long and complicated, and very little of it happened in America. While early versions are recorded across Europe, it's named after the fourth Earl of Sandwich in Kent. The story goes that he was an ardent gambler, and meat between bread was the simplest way of eating without disrupting a game of cards. Sandwich for display purposes only and should not be eaten. <laughs> Number six, The Office. That's what she said. <laughs> And yes, we mean the TV show and not the actual open plan workplace, which is largely a German invention. Anyway, unlike a lot of American remakes of British TV, The Office US did manage to tap into most of what made its predecessor purr. 
But after nine series and a shed load of awards, let's just remember where it all started. Steve Carell's Michael Scott is hilarious in his own right, but for fans of the British original, he'll always be David Brent in disguise. <laughs> Number 5. Plastic Surgery Wow, that came out of me! From Botox to boob jobs, America is the world's leading market for cosmetic surgery, with millions going under the knife every year. But the industry was by no means born in the USA. Sir Harold Gillies is often credited as the father of plastic surgery, a New Zealand-born, London-based surgeon who gathered leading physicians to treat thousands of soldiers who had been injured or disfigured in World War I. Gillies' work became a blueprint for all sorts of reconstructive procedures, and a starting point for today's aesthetic options. Number 4. The Hmm, that's interesting, I didn't know that. So I learned something new. The Light Bulb A supposedly serial stealer of other people's ideas, Thomas Edison's light bulb moment is considered one of the most significant steps in modern technology. Hey Edison! How about sharing some of those light bulbs, huh? Hey, figure it out for yourself, man! But experts are continually divided on just how much Edison did to develop the design. Before the Wizard of Menlo Park, there were countless other scientists creating electric light and light bulbs, not least British pioneers including Humphrey Davy and Joseph Swan. The anti-Edison camp claims that the inventor's only skill was knowing when to patent. One thing <laughs> yes. Edison did invent, for a 100% genuine Edison invention, that we use every day, probably, most of us. Is it uh, nasal hair clippers? Number three, donuts. I'm not 100% sold on that one. I don't know. I'm gonna stick with Thomas Edison. One little bite won't hurt you. Now, the origins of the donut are a sticky affair, with claims and counterclaims sending historians round and round in circles. However, while a stronger suggestion remains that the Dutch took the treats to America in the mid-19th century, a 2013 discovery seemingly proves that the Brits were baking them at least 50 years before. Baroness Elizabeth Dimsdale's cookbook dates to 1800, and includes a strikingly similar recipe. A deep-fried concoction of sugar, eggs, butter and yeast, add some icing, and it's the real deal. Number two, baseball. To be honest, I don't care who invented them. They're one of my favorite snacks, oh, especially the ones from Sainsbury's with the, with the sugar ones with the raspberry jam in. Oh, they are so good. A national sport and obsession in the US, baseball was born in the UK. There are countless records of bat and ball games being played in Blighty starting with stool ball in the 1300s. Sure, the rules have changed and refined over the years, but the basic premise is usually the same. Someone pitches, someone swings, others try to catch. In fact, some researchers argue that baseball is an offshoot of cricket, an English obsession which didn't catch on across the Atlantic. At all. Number one, the Star Spangled. That one still blows my mind. It's like the American family pastime. However, I will say though, Regardless of its rounders, baseball, whatever, the atmosphere at an American baseball game is incredible. All the families cheering with their foam fingers, oh, the smell of hot dogs. I absolutely love it, and I cannot wait to go to a game again. One, the Star Spangled Banner. We finish with a final salute for great British influence on American culture, because the US national anthem is sung to the tune of an 18th century English drinking song. Baltimore wordsmith Francis Scott Key takes full credit for the lyrics, but the melody was written by John Stafford Smith, a Gloucester-born composer. The anucreontic song, as it was originally known, was regularly belted around a prestigious London gentleman's club, where wealthy people met to wine and dine. Do you agree with our picks? A drinking song. <laughs> that is another one I'm going to have to look up. Not saying it's not true, but I definitely need to read more about it. To be fair, there's a couple things that I want to look up after watching this video. We, Americans, have stolen quite a few things from Britain, but to be honest, I'm glad we did, because we'd be missing out otherwise. What do you think? What would you add to the list? Remember to keep the recommendations coming, and I'll keep watching.
And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, smash that like button if that's what you're into, and I'll see you in the next video.